Please turn in your pew Bibles to page 847. This is Luke chapter 12, beginning with verse 13. As I was reading through it this week, I, I was reminded of these test questions, and maybe they were on the SAT or LSAT or whatever the case was, but you would once read a paragraph, and then you would have multiple choice answers to questions about what it is you just read. This was reading for comprehension, um, which, you know, sometimes I could do that. But one of the options that was seemed to be always given on these tests, you get A for whatever, B, C, and then D might have been something like not enough information. You remember those tests? You get those in the option not enough information? I've, I've felt like that, that with this passage where someone comes up to Jesus out of the crowd, and I don't know if he thinks Jesus is an estate lawyer, um, but he asks Jesus, well, he doesn't ask Jesus anything, he tells him, well, that could be a clue right there, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. What was his tone of voice? What was his body language? These are all very interesting things. What has happened for sure is that the patriarch of a family has died. And so there was a reading of the will or, or something along those lines. And in Jesus' culture, there was a thing, we've talked about this before, it's called primogeniture, whereas the oldest son got everything. And then it was up to the oldest son to determine what the rest of the family gets, meaning the men. Sometimes the women, if they were lucky, would get something. That's just the way it was. We can't avoid that. But I feel like I want to know more about this person from the crowd who's come up to Jesus with this demand. He's the second son, at least. Because it's interesting to me that Jesus so what, who, who do you think I am? Am I a judge? Am I an arbiter? Am I an estate lawyer? I'm not here to divide your family's inheritance among you. I'm not here to settle those sorts of issues. And then he launches into this parable. And the only thing that I want to do is look at the opening line of Jesus' parable. Because it, it fascinates me. This is verse 16. Jesus says, telling the parable, the land of a rich man produced abundantly. The land, that's how Jesus starts the story. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. Now that's almost like saying, and they lived happily ever after. But, it wasn't enough. Do we see the pro We don't even really necessarily have to go through the rest of the story. The story starts, this person had a great life. He had all that anybody could imagine and more. His land produced abundantly. He lived happily ever after. But it wasn't enough. And how often do we slip into this mindset of scarcity? 
without taking into consideration all that God gives us over and over again abundantly. See, the thing is, one of the things that I've discovered, and, and you know, for me, you know, I look at scarcity in terms of, you know, maybe knowledge, and maybe I'm not educated enough. You know, all these, all these things that, that clergy go through, is the parish big enough? What's the budget size like? And once, once we get into this mindset of focusing on the things that we don't have, it's very difficult for us to see all the great things that God has already given us. And so this is a cautionary tale. Maybe this is something you need to hear. Certainly this is something that I need to hear over and over again. I feel like I'm getting better at this the older I get. Hopefully. But let's take inventory. And we don't, we don't need to do this out loud. I don't need to see a show of hands or anything like that. But as we continue through the liturgy and we go through the prayers and receiving Holy Communion. And as we go through the week, I invite you with me to take stock of all the great things that God gives us in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't focus, I'm just talking to myself here, you can listen in if you want. Let's not focus on what we don't have, the things that our culture tells us we need. See, we're always conditioned to reach for the things that we don't have. But Jesus in this parable says, look at what you do have. A person's land, a person's life, produced abundantly. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. As Kurt said, I am the, the senior warden this year for St. John's Vestry. At our annual meeting in January, the Vestry presented our approved 2022 operating budget. The budget was balanced with anticipated annual expenses and income, each totaling $292,552. We'd like to explain we, where we are at the halfway point of the year. Of that 292500 we expected January through June expenses to total about 151000 with an income of about 170000 Regarding our expenses through the end of June, with the exception of minor miscellaneous expenses, we continue to hold the line on expenses and are on budget. You may have noticed or heard about the major basement, classroom, and nursery restoration that was long overdue and is now taking place. It is being funded with non-operational funds. We are using the remaining funds from the Mary Meyer Trust proceeds. And to save money, much of the basement work is being done by Al, the Building and Grounds Committee, and several uh, parish volunteers. The St. John's Food Ministry is growing and is also being funded with non-operational funds. This outreach is using money left over from the lunch bag program and a yearly draw from our endowment outreach fund. On the income for January through June, we have four general categories of income, member contributions, investment income, weekly plate offerings, 
and other receipts, which include gifts or memorials, facilities rentals, and fundraisers. We have received only about 94% of our expected 170,000 of our income through June. Member contributions are their largest category. This makes up about 75% of our total operating income. Through June, we've received only about 92% of the expected member contributions. Member contributions come from members who have pledged by completing a pledge card and from those who do not, do not pledge but receive quarterly statements. Through June, the pledgers are right on target. The expected non-pledger income is considerably behind what we anticipated. We understand that those who do not pledge usually give and do so generously when they are in church. Your prayerful contributions are vital to our community and our mission. We do encourage online giving. Roughly 55% of our members do so, and the numbers are increasing. The online giving can be set up for weekly, monthly, or one-time contributions, and it can come from your checking or a credit card account. It's very straightforward. You can just go to our website, www.stjohns-saginaw.org, and click on giving, and it'll direct you uh, how to set it up. Or you can contact Paul Schaub in the uh, church office and he can help you get that going. We are blessed with caring and giving members. You are the backbone and the future of St. John's, a future that is changing, but doing much more than just surviving. Please continue your support. Complete monthly financial reports are always available you can contact any vestry member, Paul Schaub, or Burris Smith for additional details. Thank you.